The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome once again friends to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog where as the title suggests I comment with a straight bat. Now if there is one thing I love talking about as much as I do about elections then it is the world of sport. That's right you could say that sports is in the genes. I grew up in a household of a former test cricketer. But I wasn't really very good at cricket, I must confess. I did play a little bit of first class cricket at Oxford, but the fact is that I wasn't a champion cricketer. But I loved the sport and what I loved about the sport was what went on beyond the boundary and sports impact on people outside the boundary as well. I recall interviewing the great Nelson Mandela and uh, the great man told me at the time uh, just how for example, the 1995 Rugby World Cup did more for post-apartheid South Africa in terms of uniting communities than perhaps even politicians could achieve. Mandela is spot on. Sports has a unique ability to build bridges in a way that a politician perhaps cannot. Uh, it can rise above all identities. I write in my book, Democracy is Leaven, how when Mohammed Shami is bowling from one end and Umesh Yadav from the other, you don't see them as Muslims and Yadavs, but proud Indians representing their country. At the same time, though, they are brand ambassadors for their region and their community in a way. Which brings me to today's straight back, where I wish to celebrate a week of emerging sporting talent at a time when toxic religious politics seems to divide us. Let me be honest, the way in which the Kashi Vishwanath Gyanvapi mosque temple issue is now playing out should leave me and indeed most right thinking Indians depressed. What I am even more depressed by is the way the news media is handling the story. It's almost as if uh, even while the issue is being heard in the courts, a sensitive issue, a large section of the partisan, uh, a large section of the media has begun acting like partisan cheerleaders, political cheerleaders, almost willing the Hindu side to be awarded the right to worship right away. In a week where wholesale price index has reached a record level, where retail prices have reached uh, an eight-year high of 7.79%, wholesale prices above 15%. Primetime News TV, my friends, has been dominated by the sight of Malvis and Mahans, politicians from the right and left, slugging it out in TV studios. It's almost as if the cost of living standards simply doesn't matter. It's not an issue that seems to matter. Or maybe it is inconvenient for many to discuss inflation. I remember when I raised it uh, on a couple of shows this week, I got a barrage of hostile messages on social media from the right wing pro-government army, almost as if no uncomfortable questions can be asked at the moment to those in power. Which is why, my friends, I'm glad that there is so much sport on at the moment. There's the IPL, of course, and there is no better anti-depression stress buster than cricket's ultimate carnival. And for me, as a cricket buff, there is no better sight than uh, in this IPL than a young fast bowler from Jammu, Umran Malik, running into bowl consistently at 150 kmph and making the best batsman in the world really jump and squirm. And it's not just Umran. This IPL has seen a remarkable surfeit of fast bowlers in what was once seen as the great land of spin. Mohsin Khan, Kuldeep Sen, Yash Dayal, Arshdeep Singh, Avesh Khan. The list is a very long one. Umran, though, I believe is special because he has a rare X factor in sport. He has raw pace. I cannot forget the sheer excitement when he bowled a couple of Yorkers that demolished the stumps 
Even the normally unflappable Sunil Gavaskar was excited that night when Umran picked up four wickets in a really hostile spell of IPL bowling. That he comes from Jammu, which is really a cricketing backwater, is striking. Uh, that uh, he only took to the game seriously a couple of years ago makes his achievements even more impressive. Credit, in fact, to his coaches in Jammu and indeed the mentor of the JNK cricket team, Irfan Pathan, that they spotted such talents in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and that we now have cricketers who are coming in from that state, uh, which was never seen as uh, a cricketing uh, home in a way. Umran's rise is interesting also because it coincides with a period where the pop in the popular imagination, a young Muslim from K the Kashmir Valley or from Jammu and Kashmir is seen through the prism of a film like Kashmir Files, where uh, the young Muslim will be seen, you know, because the film carrier catchers the Kashmiri Muslim almost as a terrorist. Uh, between the news media and popular cinema, the Kashmiri Muslim sadly today is stereotyped as either a stone pelter or a terrorist or a separatist villain, which is why it is so important to have the likes of uh, an Umran Malik discard every stereotype, show the world that skill knows no boundaries. Uh, I know of young Kashmiris in Delhi who even today tell me how difficult they find it to rent a house, to get a job or frankly to be accepted as equal citizens in this country. Without pushing this narrative, therefore, of Kashmiri victimhood, I do believe that the only way to build bridges is to celebrate Umran as an exemplar of what a truly inclusive meritocratic society can do. He offers hope in that sense to so many young people from India's most bitterly divided and alienated state as he does give all of us a wake-up call. Those who live outside Kashmir to know what is happening and the talents that exist in that state. In fact, in this week where we've discovered a new cricket hero, we've also remarkably discovered a sporting heroine. The rise of Nikhat Zareen from Nizamabad in Telangana to become the women's world boxing champion is again a story that real dreams are made of. This is a 25-year-old boxer who started the sport at the age of 13, comes from a simple middle-class family, third of four sisters, but whose parents remarkably encouraged her to pursue her sporting dream. What makes her journey to the very top even more special, as I said, is that she comes at a time when there is every attempt once again being made to stereotype the Muslim woman as being trapped behind a burqa or a hijab. Islamic extremists will insist that the hijab or the burqa is part of a dress code of the community. And then Hindu extremists or the Hindu pseudo-nationalists, as I call them, have used this issue to demonize an entire community. The manner in which the hijab controversy, for example, played out in Karnataka a few months ago was just awful. It polarized schools and university campuses on sharp religious lines, on toxic religious lines. Which is why when a Nikhat Zareen comes around and competes in a sports like boxing, wears short pants and shatters every stereotype that can exist, defeats every prejudiced mind, it's time for a real celebration. Truth is also that uh, the likes of Umran and Nikhat are no longer isolated cases, my friends. Across this country, as literacy levels rise, as sports is seen as aspirational, as access to sports facilities for men and women improves all the time in every nook and corner of this country, trust me, this country will see and throw up more and more sporting heroes who don't conform to the traditional stereotype. Which might also explain that this is also the week when India defeated the mighty Indonesians to lift the Thomas Cup in badminton. And it wasn't as much as a surprise as it might have been a couple of decades ago. Then we might have thought India winning the Thomas Cup. Today, we've got a generation of sports persons uh, who have a fearless spirit never say die attitude that really marks the young Indian sports persons. 
And when they just happen to be, in some cases, young Indian Muslim men and women, I think it makes it more special in the turbulent, polarizing times that we live because they become a symbol of just how sports in particular breaks the religious barrier like little else and exposes in a way the hollowness of those who seek to revive ancient animosities, for example, over places of worship. Since we started with Nelson Mandela, let me end with a quote he gave me after that 1995 South Africa World Cup victory. He said, and I quote him, Sports has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. It speaks to the youth in a language they understand. Sports can create hope where there was only despair. Let me then also leave you with one question that's blowing in the summer wind, where religious temperatures are being deliberately pumped up as weapons of mass distraction, my friends. What would you rather watch on primetime TV? A Hindu and Muslim politician fighting it out or the religious clergy shouting at each other over a shivling versus a fountain? Or would you watch an Umran and Nikhat sharing their inspiring heroic stories? Think about it. That was The Straight Bat. Do of course uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind! Namaskar!